Hey guys, welcome back. So today we have a story. It's a story that is about creation, about overcoming insurmountable odds, about helping out the downtrodden. It's an outstanding story. And it all begins with a story of creation. Now, if you're not a Christian and you don't believe in God, that's perfectly fine. But to those of us that have faith, God created the world in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. Sunday is the day of rest. So all that took place long, long ago. But on a Monday in 1983, God blessed us with one more miracle, and that was called the Bren 10. The Bren 10 is the first handgun to chamber God's cartridge, which is the 10 millimeter. Now, the 10 millimeter was popular, then it was not popular for a while, but now it's back in full force, and that's part of what today's video is about. So let's do a little shooting with the original, and then I wanna show you a handgun for the masses. Mm-mm-mm, that sweet 10 millimeter. Wait till you see the next one. There's a company called High Point, and High Point is oftentimes ridiculed, but High Point does something that most other companies cannot do, and that's to bring a very affordable handgun to market or firearm to market that generally works really, really well. Now, their first foray into 10 millimeter looked something like this. Now, you've seen this particular firearm before here on the channel. Uh, you know, earlier versions would have been chambered, obviously, in things like 9mm, but they finally put it, or put it, 10mm, in this carbine and put it out onto the market. And we made a little bit of fun of it. We did some shooting with it, but what we found it to be was reliable, accurate, and generally fun to shoot. Now, the ammunition we're shooting out here today is from our friends over at Federal. And this is just American Eagle, 10 millimeter. So it's kind of on the, uh, the more mild side. It's not super hot 10 millimeter, but they do supply the ammunition to the channel free of charge. And we'd like to thank them for doing that because it's really awesome. Love Federal Ammunition, been using it since I was a kid. So this is it, the 10 millimeter high point. Of course, the next logical step in their line of offerings would probably be a handgun, right? Ten rounds of incredible power and reliability and a really low price. Many 10 millimeter pistols that are out there on the market are gonna cost you $500 or far more than that. And there's some pretty darn nice 10 millimeters out there to be had, guns like this one. But a lot of people don't always have that kind of money to spend and that's where companies like High Point come in. We've fired high point handguns like many other gun tubers have over the years. We've tortured high point handguns and the things are incredibly reliable. And they're also like 250 bucks or less. And that's where the price point for the new 10 millimeter comes in, right around 250 bucks. Yes, I bought this myself. I found it online at Kentucky Gun Company and put it in the cart and could not wait to get it into my hands because I wanted to see what a 10 millimeter high point was all about. And this is it. 46 ounces of just pure hand cannery, 10 rounds in the magazine. And um, yeah, it has the new lines of the next generation of high points that are coming out, the JY9s or something like that. This might be like the JY10. It has, has the styling of the new guns that are yet to come in nine millimeter, but it's a 10 millimeter and it's kind of, I guess, jump starting those other pistols in the second generation, if you can call it that. So it's got some pretty interesting lines to it, serrations that have kind of an angle to them. The guns generally look better. It looks like they've upgraded the polymer maybe a little bit. It, it doesn't look as cheap as some of my other handguns, but uh, yeah, it has a single stack, 10 round magazine. This is the exact same magazine that would be used in the carbine I just showed you. And again, we have Federal Ammunition loaded into it. Does have a threaded barrel, has high-vis sights, which are basically just um, paint <laughs> on the sights. But you have a pick rail down here, so you can put your favorite light on there. If you wanna carry this huge, heavy beast when it's loaded, it's like carrying two bricks in your pocket. But it should work just fine. Now, we're gonna take you along in our journey. This will be literally the first magazine I put through the gun. And so to do that, you're gonna to wanna to look, well, you know what guys? <laughs> I have shot a lot of 
high point firearms in my life, and I generally trust them, but this is a 10 millimeter handgun that has no locking mechanism. This is a straight blowback 10 millimeter. Might wanna take a few precautions on this first magazine. Like just about every high point firearm I've seen when we first took this thing out of the box, just kind of looked it over, we did notice some really rough machine marks, like on the breech face, it looks like somebody took a wheel grinder to it. On the underside of the slide, it looks like somebody took a grinder to it, and unevenly so. They're very crudely put together. Matter of fact, my example had a big dent in the barrel right out of the box, brand new. And so they're not going to be, let's say, things of pride for most people. There's no pride in ownership of one of these, but at the price point, it definitely is attractive to a lot of folks that just don't have a lot of money to spend. Now, unfortunately, we've only fired a couple of boxes through this gun so far. We were just goofing around shooting a YouTube short and the gun malfunctioned. It just didn't have enough oomph to strip the round out of the magazine, so I kind of had to help it home. You'll also notice on the first magazine we fired when I had the best car armor on, Mandalorian slash Boba Fett. Um, that was probably a little overkill. I mean, of course, best car is almost impenetrable, but I felt it might be prudent. But, uh, you know, when we fired that first shot, you could see the slide go, <laughs> it kind of hesitated. I went back on YouTube and I took a look at some other videos that are out there. I think TFB TV, and you can kind of see where the slide comes back, kind of hangs there for a second and then kind of works its way forward on a couple of, of shots. So it might just be that the gun needs to be broken in. And if you watch the channel, you know where I stand on that whole thing. But assuming the gun does break in and become 100% reliable at 250 bucks, it's probably the best value in terms of 10 millimeter. Got two more magazines loaded up. Let's see how she does. Again, we're just using Federal. We're not using the super hot stuff. Maybe it prefers the super hot stuff. I don't have a whole lot of it. And honestly, <laughs> I haven't read the manual, so I don't know if it's like rated for like buffalo bore. So we're just going to stick with the relatively mild stuff. But it should cycle this. This is because what most people are going to shoot. Most people aren't going to shoot a $2 round. They're going to try to opt for the more affordable stuff like the American Eagle. So dead trigger. And then I realized the slide was slightly rearward. So I think I can probably remedy this by that little maneuver. Kind of a weird, almost dead trigger feel there for a second, but then the trigger reset. It seems like perhaps it might be something to do with the full magazine. Again, we have to deal with that upward pressure of all the rounds in the magazine pushing on the bottom of the slide. So that might be why on a fresh magazine, the gun's struggling just a little bit. Perhaps that'll break in. We could also try hitting it with a little bit more oil. Whoa, okay. So once again, the round was kind of sitting nose down in the magazine. When I canted it over to show it to you guys, it just kind of went home on its own without the assistance from me. See that hesitation there? Hesitation. All right, so today we have to put at least 200 rounds to this gun to see if that stops, because that honestly is the first time I've had such problems with high point firearms. I hope it doesn't continue, because I really do want to love this thing. I mean, this is my next carry gun potentially.
until I did use, you know, copious amounts of lubricant, try to get the thing uh, working. We're getting pretty darn close to four boxes of rounds through the gun, and we're still experiencing the occasional failure to go into battery, generally when you put a, fr a fresh magazine in the gun. The other thing that I'm having problems with that I've not experienced with my other high point pistols or the carbine is a, I'm still trying to figure out if it's me not releasing the trigger all the way, but the trigger's not resetting. And I am purposely like cycling the trigger all the way out, at least I think I am. And so I think there might be, with, at least with this particular pistol, an issue with the trigger reset. I'll have to shoot it some more and really try to pay attention to it to find out. But it does seem to have the persistent problem, at least getting close to 200 rounds, of, um, of not being 100% reliable, which is not what I expected. And it seems like, like I just watched that happen, the first round of the magazine kind of wants to nose down. When that slide comes home, it's pushing the round down, and then it just kind of under spring pressure forces it up into the feed ramp. So it seems that the feed geometry on the 10 millimeter pistol isn't working as well as it did with the high point carbine. Had no such problems with that particular firearm. Okay, perfect example. Now I can close at any moment, but here's a perfect example of it um, nosing that round down in the magazine. Okay, just a palm to the back of the slide. We'll fix it. But it seems like there's something off with the magazine. Right there's, okay, just caught. I'm talking about the trigger reset. All the way out. Okay, so on the trigger reset, paying very close attention to it. You must, at least with this particular gun, let that trigger all the way out to the point where I'm literally taking my finger off of the trigger for the reset to be 100% reliable. Let's see if we got another mag here. We do. Now, with the high point, you'll notice it has a very rudimentary safety right here, and there's no slide stop or slide release to load it, insert a full magazine and pull the slide to the rear, and in this case, assist it forward with the tap. Check that first round or so reliability and check that trigger reset again. Okay, so that one worked pretty well, and it seems like it might even be magazine specific. The older magazine might be the one nosing down. That's the one that came out of the carbine. This might be the newer one, looks newer. It seems like this one's working better. So you'll wanna make sure you have magazines that you've tested to make sure the gun's working. And absolutely, you will, even if you have, at least with this particular copy, if I have even the slightest amount of pressure on that trigger during reset, because I can't really feel it reset, I don't really hear it resetting, if you don't take your finger all the way off the trigger before you pull it again, there's a good chance it won't reset. Okay, so let's test the old mag versus the new mag theory. I believe this is the magazine out of the carbine, which still doesn't give me any problems in the carbine. It's nosing down that round as I try to chamber it. So, Okay, that was interesting. This is the magazine that came with the pistol. The followers look the same, but they're slightly different color. There, no problems chambering that first round.
All right, so that confirms my suspicions. Magazines are gonna be, obviously, uh, integral to the proper function of the gun. If you have older 10 millimeter magazines or a magazine that isn't working, try picking up a different magazine and seeing if the gun works with it. It's unfortunate I can't cross pollinate the magazines with the carbine and the pistol because they technically use the same magazine, but it looks like that older magazine, perhaps that spring is wearing already, even though I don't ever really shoot the gun, but it's definitely causing this one problems, but the gun, the magazine it's shipped with, it seems to be working just fine. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm not gonna be able to show you what I'm about to do, but if you're watching on Rumble, you'll get the full unedited version. So we can no longer show you how to mount a suppressor to a firearm safely. So uh, under YouTube's policies, but there's no such policies over on Rumble. So it does have a standard thread pitch on here, which is compatible with my OSS or Huxworks. And this is the Rad 45. Now this one does have its booster installed in it. This is a fixed barrel. So technically I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm only gonna fire 10 rounds. I don't wanna take my booster out just for demonstration purposes. So now here on YouTube, I'm going to cut. All right, guys, welcome back. We have a suppressor on the high point. And this is the model of JXP 10 millimeter. Has a nice looking finish on the slide, surprisingly, even though it still has rather crude construction. All right, and this is its magazine that it came with. So this should be the reliable magazine. I should have the best car armor on, but here goes nothing. No debris to the face. Nice recoil impulse. Yeah, it seems to work pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is the box that the pistol will come in. Now, I said earlier that the gun cost about 240 bucks. The actual cost on the gun was 219, but then when you throw in tax, shipping, things like that, the price starts to go up. So it's, it's just a little over $200 is the actual cost on the gun. And so if you take a look, this will tell you the model number on the outside, open it up. You're gonna find a bunch of paperwork, really good instruction manual. Probably cost more to print this instruction manual on the high gloss paper than the uh, actual cost of the gun. But it has really good instruction manual. Gives you a quick breakdown of the gun on the sheet. This is a spec sheet. I found it interesting that they say that it weighs 36 ounces unloaded. TFB TV got 46 and we got three pounds, 1.2 ounces was our actual weight. So it seems like their weight is just a bit off. But um, so that gives you just kind of a brief rundown of what the gun is. And then inside, you're going to have, oops, a trigger lock and a little tool. The pistol and the magazine, of course, won't, will not because of its huge base plate, it won't fit in the box with the magazine inserted, so you do have to take it out. Then you get a uh, thing about mental health, it's okay to talk about it. Thanks, High Point. And then you get a ghost ring sight. So it comes with a standard V-notch rear sight, but if you like a ghost ring rear sight, you can install that on the pistol yourself. It's also worth noting that the grip panels on the GXP-10 are removable, and I've actually seen wooden grips out there for these things. So you could go out and get like a really nice pair of you know, ivory grips that also cost more than your handgun potentially. <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, that's what you get for your 200 and so dollars. So my thoughts on the, uh, the GXP 10 millimeter high point handgun. It seems to have consistent quality with the other high points that I've owned in my life. This one seems to be a little bit problematic with one specific magazine, but that's not unheard of, at least with the magazine the gun shipped with. We've had good reliability with the gun. The trigger reset is difficult. It does have adjustable sights, does not have the facilities for an RMR, any type of red dot sight cut into the slide, which is a little bit surprising to me. You'd think that they would maybe do that, uh, you know, as they're updating the product line and trying to make it into future generations of handguns, but it does have a pick rail down here for a light if you wanted to use it for something like self-defense. Very simple controls. I'm not going to field strip it for you. It field strips just like every other high point handgun out there. It's not a fun process and I'm not gonna repeat it here. If you wanna learn how to take your gun apart, you can check out a different high point handgun video. They're pretty much all the same. 
If you want to load the pistol, pull the slide to the rear, slingshot it, if you will. Very simple manual safety. The gun will fire once that safety is just barely out of engagement with the slide. It does not have to be all the way down to be off. If it's just right there, the gun is going to fire. So I like the new aesthetics. I think that the new guns look really sharp. Uh, you know, internally, they're just as crude as they ever were. Sometimes I've taken them completely apart and the internal springs look really, really cheap. <laughs> it's like, would you want to trust your life to this? Well, if you don't have a bunch of money, it's probably your best option. If you're truly on a very tight budget and you can't pay $500 for a handgun or you can't afford $350 or $400 for a used handgun and you want to spend $200 or thereabout for a high point, it may be your best option. I certainly wouldn't turn my back on them because having a gun, uh, regardless of the cost, is better than having no gun. And generally speaking, they've been pretty reliable firearms for me over the years. This one, just use the magazine it's shipped with. All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Check us out over on Rumble. YouTube has implemented new policies here where we can't show you the loading of 30 round magazines. We can't show you the mounting of suppressors or optics or lights. Whole bunch of new rules we have to play by, but we don't have to play by those over on Rumble. There's a link down below. Right here on YouTube, you got a little tip button. You can press that tip button right underneath the video player you're watching right now. Toss us a few bucks, help keep us moving forward. Also, you can support us here by a monthly subscription, and there is a link to join our channel right below the video player you're watching right now. And we also would invite you to swing by, check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 15 years of support, and let's hope it makes it through the last 10 rounds. It should. We'll talk to you guys soon.